Who controls the software that tells electronic voting machines what to do? Mr. Curtis, would you please state your full name for the record? My uh, name is Clinton Eugene Curtis. In December 2004, a group of Congress members met to gather information about the technology used in the November election. One witness was Clint Curtis, a computer programmer, who testified about being asked to create vote-switching software. Mr. Curtis, are there programs that can be used to secretly fix elections? Yes. How do you know that to be the case? Because in October of 2000, I wrote a prototype for Congressman Tom Feeney. It would rig an election? It would flip the vote 51-49. And he was very specific on what he wanted. He wanted it to be touchscreen capable, which if you write it in Windows, it's XY coordinates, it's mouse movements, it's, it's done, no problem. He wanted it to be so you didn't have to have any third party implements. You didn't have to sit across the street with a keyboard. You didn't have to bring something in, a little chip and insert it in the computer, nothing. He wanted it so you could go to the screen, hit some hidden buttons and flip the vote and decide who the winner is just by doing that. Who did you say you were asked to prepare? I was asked by Tom Feeney. At that time, he was Speaker of the House of Florida. And he asked you to design a code to rig an election? Yes. While he was Speaker of the Florida House? Yes. He wanted the source code so that you, when the manipulation happened, you couldn't see it even if you saw the source code. This is to control the vote in South Florida. So I told Rena, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that, you know, that'll get you in trouble. And so, you know, with the bulk of finding out how dishonest Feeney and this company was, it was time for me to leave. So I quit and moved on. I've been told that people who assume that a large fraction of the election result may have been affected by uh, deliberate fraud in the computer are paranoid because in order to do that, you have to have access to thousands of machines. To what extent is that true? It depends on the technology you use. If you did a central tabulation machine that fed in, all you'd have to do is set a flag. So one person putting in bad code in a central tabulation machine could affect thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of votes. Right. And your testimony is under oath? Yes, sir. And the testimony you've given is true? Yes, sir. Thank you. Soon after he testified, Clint Curtis passed a lie detector test administered by the retired chief polygraph operator for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. 